Hello, my name is Mike Mackey. I am the filter engineer here at Sinclair Technologies and today we'll be tuning a uh, Q-type duplexer. The specific model we're tuning today is the Q3220E-1. Uh, Although this tuning procedure would apply to any of our uh, ResLock or square cavity type uh, Q-duplexers. The tools you'll need to do the tuning are a 3 quarter inch wrench, a 7 16 inch wrench, either a uh, trimmer tuning tool or any small uh, flathead screwdriver would work, a uh, N-type T with one end male connector, and a N-type 50 ohm terminator. For the uh, field tuning of a Q-duplexer, you basically have two controls. You have the tuning rod, which tunes the center frequency of the cavity, and the tunable capacitor, which changes the frequency of the notch. So that are the only two, two, uh, two uh, controls that you'll need in order to adjust the, the duplexer. Now, in terms of what cavity is for which frequency, we have a convention where the cavities on the left, when the connectors are facing towards you, are to pass the low frequency, and the cavities on the right would then pass the high frequency. But that is just a convention. There is no reason why you couldn't reverse that if it's more convenient for you. When first tuning a duplexer, uh, it's a lot easier if you initially tune the cavities individually. So you use the three quarter inch wrench to loosen the connector on the cavity and remove the, uh, the harness. If you do both cavities on one side at the same time, then the uh, cable won't be in the way as much. So to tune the cavities, you want to attach the N-type T to the top of the connector and make the connections to your network analyzer uh, using uh, the T-junction. The So we have the T attached and now the first step would be to loosen the nut holding the tuning rod in place using the 7 16 inch wrench and then proceed to adjust the frequency of the combiner so that the minimum of the return loss is on your desired frequency. On the network analyzer there, the top two uh, curves are the return loss at the input and output ports of the T. The bottom curve is the uh, insertion loss of the cavity showing the notch. Now the notch is a little bit high, so we take our tuning tool, insert it into the slot in the capacitor, and we adjust until the notch is on the desired low frequency. Yeah. Now it doesn't matter which order you tune these cavities, they act independently until you attach the the cable, but both of these two cavities should be tuned to the same frequency. So tuning the order the tuning order between them doesn't matter. So now we are going to tune the second cavity using the exact same procedure. Again Loosening the nut on the top, adjusting the frequency, and to, of course, to raise the frequency of the cavity, you pull the tuning rod out. To lower it, you push it in. You can see here the return loss coming into place. Then we adjust the capacitor to get the notch on the low frequency. Like 
like so. And now these two cavities are tuned. At this stage, you do not have to be all that accurate because when the cable is attached, there's going to be a fine tuning stage at the, uh, as the final step. Now we're going to tune the low pass stage. Again, removing the, the cable section so we can tune the cavities independently. And again, attaching the T connector. And we see here the return loss for this stage. We're tuning to the lower frequency, and the notch should be at the higher frequency. And now we do the final cavity. Nut. Okay, and the final cavity is now approximately where it should be. So now we put the harness back on the duplexer. Just be careful that you do not cross thread the connector onto the, uh, onto the duplexer. this stage it might be a good idea to uh, tighten down the uh, connectors just so you don't forget you don't have to worry about there being too much of a specific torque on there you just have to make sure the connector feels good and snug onto the uh, onto the loop In fact, you do not want to over tighten as you can damage the threads on the connector. Okay. So now we're going to tune the low pass section first. So attach your network analyzer cables to the low pass input into the antenna port and take your 50 ohm terminator attach it to the high pass uh, section now on the analyzer you can see in the upper left corner that is the return loss at the input port in the upper right corner that is the return loss in the antenna and again the bottom curve is the insertion loss between the input at the low pass and the antenna port now 
So we can see that the return loss is good, it's within spec, but we could get it just a little bit better. So we can fine tune the insertion loss curve a little bit by adjusting the, uh, the tuning rods. Now you can see why we'd want to use the T in the initial tuning stage because when the cable is attached it's hard to differentiate which control is controlling which on the, on the uh, network analyzer plots. So that's why you limit yourself to the putting the cable on for the final tuning. And we can see from the analyzer plot that the notch is qu not quite on frequency. So what we do is we do a final adjustment to the notch. That's one cavity. The other cavity. Okay. Now do the high pass section. We just swap the input cable for the 50 ohm load and we repeat the step for the high pass. Okay, we can see right off that the return loss in the high pass doesn't really need adjusting, so we'll just adjust the, adjust the notch on the, uh, the low frequency side. As a final step, we're now going to tighten the tuning rods, and after this, uh, the duplexer is tuned. So, we tighten until we start to feel a little bit of resistance, then just go a tiny bit more. And to, to be sure that it's good and tight, we try to lift the duplexer with the tuning rod, and if we let it go and it comes back to where it was before, we know that the rod has been and tighten sufficiently. So for the next cavity again start to feel significant resistance just a touch more yeah. again it back back to where it was, so that's tight. Now we swap the cable back to the low pass section. It's always good to be able to see what the curve is doing while you're doing the the tightening, because it can potentially shift the cavity a little bit when you're when you're tightening down the tuning rod. And actually, I just want to get it just a little bit better. to go on this one. All right. There, that's tight. And the final cavity. Flexor is tuned. Uh, as 
just an important safety tip for those of you out there who may wish to tune the duplexer with something other than a network analyzer. It's important that your signal source be low power. Do not try and tune this under transmit power as it could cause uh, high reflection, possibly damaging your transmitter, and if you are swapping cables while it's under transmit power, it could possibly cause injury. So remember, when tuning the duplexer, do not tune it under transmit level powers.